Welcome to another episode of Class Haven Farms. So what do we got going on today? Well, today we had five turkeys and three baby chicks show up in the mail. So today, me and the Chicken Whisperer thought we would show you guys how to set up your brooder and how to start your baby chicks or your baby turkeys off right. So stay tuned. So if this is your first time here at the channel, welcome. Uh, this is Class Haven Farms and my name is Andy. Uh, so what we're doing is we're getting uh, our brooders set up for our five baby turkeys and our three baby chicks that we just got in the mail. Um, first, we'll talk about brooders. So what you see here in this wooden box, this is a brooder. Now this was one that I made a number of years ago and all I did was I made it out of some leftover OSB board. Um, I had some one by ones and I just ran the one by ones down in all the corners. So that way I could run um, just leftover drywall screws I had um, to kind of form the walls up and build the bottom. You can do something like this and use a just scrap wood to make something. Um, you can make a brooder out of cardboard box. You can make it out of um, a Rubbermaid tote. Uh, and actually, that's what we're going to do upstairs with the three baby chicks because we're going to keep these guys separate since we have turkeys and, and chicks. Um, so we're going to use a Rubbermaid tote, which I'll show you the setup for that upstairs. Or if you had a big uh, steel like water that you would see like like a trough for cows or something like that, you could probably pick that up in a local feed store. You could use that. Um, it really your, your brooder size depends on how many birds you have. So with uh, five turkeys that are going in here. We got five white-breasted, uh, what, what were they called there, Chicken Whisperer? Five white, broad-breasted uh, turkeys. So uh, it's a heritage breed, so we got that. Um, so we're going to get this thing set up for you. As you can see, I have my light here, which is just a regular light. There's no, This is not a heat light. This is just a regular light, just to simulate daylight. It's important that you establish that with your flock, especially if you're going to keep them down in the basement where I have these, where these turkeys are going to be held. Um, so basically this will get turned on in the morning and it will get turned off at night. Uh, sometimes I'll set them up on timers so it just goes on and off automatically. The next thing that I have here is a heat lamp. This is just a traditional heat lamp that you could pick, it, pick up at any uh, feed store. And with the temperature that you're looking for these guys, especially in their first... Uh, First couple weeks is anywhere between 90 to 100 degrees. Now for me, one thing that I like to do just to kind of keep an eye on my temperature is I just use one of these infrared thermometers and right now I'm sitting at about 97 directly right underneath and over here on the far side I'm at 86. So that gives these turkeys plenty of room if they need to get warm they'll come over to this side if they want to get cold and cool down a little bit they'll come over to this side. It's important that you watch your baby chicks or your turkeys or whatever it is, is that you have. Um, if you notice that they're huddling up, that means they're cold. So, you know, check the temperature, see what it's at. If you see that they're staying far away from whatever heat source it is that you're using, that means it's way too hot. So if it's way too hot, you can do a couple different things. You can raise the heat source up. Um, if it's, a, if it's a light or a, a, a heater that you're able to dial the temperature and turn the temperature around, you can do that. But it all kind of depends on how you're going to set everything up. So the next thing that you'll want to do is add wood chips. All right. So no matter what kind of brooder you're using, you want to have wood chips. Wood chips help cut down on the manure and the amount of manure. Um, I like to use just the, the wood chip shavings. Uh, these ones I got from Tractor Supply, but I like to use these shavings only because it helps for the manure to be able to fall through here. Uh, if you use straw and things like that, 
then what happens is that manure just sits on top of the straw. And with these little baby chicks, it's easy for them to kick these wood chips around. Uh, and when they kick it around, it'll cover over some of the manure that's already down. But if you're using straw, uh, these little baby chicks, they're not going to be able to kick that straw around and they're not going to be able to cover up their manure. So typically what I will do with, with six turkeys being in here, um, probably every couple, couple of days, I will just add some more wood chips down to cover up the manure because what that does is it, it covers up the smell. Uh, these guys will be down in the basement and then the three uh, French blue copper Morans, they will be upstairs. So I definitely don't want the smell upstairs. Um, so putting these wood chips down just make, helps to cover up some of that smell. And uh, for, I mean, really, the turkeys and the baby chicks will only be in here for three weeks. After three weeks, we'll move them outside onto fresh grass. So the one thing you want to make sure that you do is have wood chips on hand. So you want to focus on your brooder and making sure you have plenty of wood chips. The next thing that I worry about is water. So you can use any kind of water that you have. The only recommendation that I would make and what I've what I've learned over the years is I put rocks, at least for the first two to three days uh, here in their water. And that just keeps them, the turkeys will probably be okay, but the small baby chicks, um, you gotta remember this, they were inside of a wet egg. So to them being wet was, was a safe place. Um, and what you don't want them to do is to feel this water and be like, ooh, that was a safe place for me. Let me curl up in this and then they curl up into it and end up drowning themselves. So you wanna make sure that you set the water up um, and you can see it's just got some rocks in there. So if they get in there, uh, they can push themselves out. They won't be submerged in the water. Again, the turkeys will be fine because they're a lot bigger than the three French blue copper Morans that we have. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and get these turkeys out. These guys, uh, we lost one shortly after opening the box up. Um, you can see he's he's probably a more weaker one, or she. Um, you know, we I got these from Meyer Hatchery. Uh, they hatched on Monday. Today is Thursday, and look, they're already going to the water. You can see these guys are. As I said, they hatched on Monday. Um, and now we're at Thursday and we just now got them. Um, so we ended up losing one. I had ordered six originally. So I'll have to go through the process with them. The good thing about Meyer Hatchery is they do have a, uh, they have a program. You just have to fill a form out if you lose any within the first 48 hours of picking them up. Um, so we'll, we'll do that. Uh, it was just unfortunate. I mean, it, it was a, the one turkey was alive when I got the box but it did not look too well. I tried to kind of nurse it back, but it just was, had been in the box for too long. Um, so it's really unfortunate. Usually when I get them from Meyer Hatchery, uh, they always, they'll hatch on that Monday and then they're usually to me by Tuesday or Wednesday. But for whatever reason with the United States Postal Service, they sat at one of the, um, near the airport uh, by me up at BWI and it seemed like they sat there for a really, really long, a lot longer of a time than they normally do uh, before it, they, they got in the uh, truck to come down here to Southern Maryland where I'm at. So as you can see, man, these turkeys, they're just checking everything out, which is good. Um, I'll give you a little hint. It looks like these guys are pretty good, but if you need to introduce them to the water, you could just pick them up and just dip their beaks. Of course, he's not going to go with the program here. And you can see that one's already starting to get into it. So that's the cool thing about turkeys and, and baby chicks. It's like they teach each other. Um, so this is, uh, this is pretty neat here. So we got our water set up. We'll go ahead and get our feed set up for them. Now, what I have here is I just have um, just your regular chick starter. So we'll set that in here. Let these guys get some feed in them. Um, the other thing that I have is just the supplement that Meyer Hatchery will send. Uh, it usually calls for, uh, you mix the entire packet and then two tablespoons of water. Uh, I always set it out for, for the birds, but a lot of my birds, they don't, 
Now this guy might prove me wrong. Usually they don't mess with this too much. Um, I, I always mix it up and put it in there for them, but I've never really ever had any chicks that I've ever gotten in the mail really go on this. Now, as you can see, I'm starting to get some of the wood sha shavings and stuff in there. Uh, what I do is for the first day or two, I'll deal with it and I'll dig that stuff out. I'll just give them fresh water as time goes on. But um, what I, what after about the two or three day mark, I will actually set a little glass. Um, it's like a glass bowl that doesn't sit very high. I'll sit that in there and set the water on it so it, it can get up higher. And then with the feed, uh, I'll put that just on a small cardboard box. So... Oh, these guys are proving me wrong. Look, they're actually eating the uh, they're actually eating the supplement stuff that I'm getting from Meyer Hatchery. I've never had any birds eat that stuff. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So over here in the blue dish, what I have is just some chick grit. Uh, again, just just like chickens, uh, turkeys have a gizzard, and they use stones and grit to be able to break their food down so i just have some some store-bought chick grit over there uh, if you have a stream nearby you uh, you can go in there and kind of sift through the silt and just just sift through all the sand and stuff and you can get some pretty decent small stones out of it uh, that's basically all chick grit is anyway so you know they got their water they got their chick grit they got their supplement and then they have their feed And we'll see. Oh, look at that. Not too sure about it. <laughs> Guess I moved too fast for him, huh? Yeah. Let's see everybody in the camera. They're very curious little birds. It's always fun watching them when they're this old. So as you can see, we have a Rubbermaid tote set up. Uh, this is in our living room. Um, but you can see I have the heat lamp here. Um, I set the heat lamp up on a chair just to get it up a little higher so it wasn't so hot. But the nice thing that I can also do here is that if it does start to get too hot, I can just slide this farther away from the lamp. And even though they won't be directly under it, it'll still heat the section up and it'll still be hot enough for them. Um, right now, it looks like it's sitting at about 95 where I had it, so that's perfect. So as you can see, we got our feed, we got our water, we got our chick grit, and we got our supplement. So let's go ahead and Chicken Whisperer has these chickens because these are his. So buddy, if you want to go ahead and bring them in here and you can start setting them in their brooder so they can see their new home. So these baby chicks are the Chicken Whisperers because somebody went with me to the bingo hall back in the winter time and ended up winning. How much money did you win? $600 he won at bingo. Uh, obviously dad had to be the one to win it, but since they were his games, uh, I gave him the money. And I said, what do you want to do with your winnings? And Chicken Whisperer, what did you tell, tell everybody what you wanted to do? I'm gonna zoom in so they can see the, see your baby chicks. So I wanted to do four baby chicks yep. and two goats. Yep. So you wanted four baby chicks and two goats. So what he got here was uh, three blue copper morans. Um, and then we ended up getting two more goats. So we got Mythosaur. No. Mythosaur was for Emma. You get, No, you got Mythosaur and you got, who was the other one? Biscuit? Wasn't that yours? And then Lola was was uh, the Lily Tamers. So, so he has his blue, three blue copper Morans. Now he did want he wanted one male Buff Orphington, and as he said, so we can make more Ethels. Um, but we ended up losing that one. Uh, when I picked the box up from the post office and I got out to the car and I opened it up, we had already lost that one. So, uh, you know, this is, I will say that's the first time in, in what, four years ordering chicks from Meyer Hatchery that we lost. We've ever lost one in the mail. And uh, I don't fault Meyer Hatchery on that. I just fault them being at that facility for the post office for so long. So I've already completed the form on that one um, and actually already got the refund 
from Meyer Hatchery on that. So if you if you do end up losing a baby chick or a baby turkey uh, within the first 48 hours, all you have to do is fill a form out and they will take care of you. So there's those guys. They are super tired and they're catching the warmth. So we're just going to let them chill. Something that I do want to show you guys, and I didn't show it to you downstairs, but I'll show it to you here since we're here. Um, just for added safety and security, I put a zip tie around the heat lamp here. So that way this doesn't come loose because it's in the house. So the last thing that I would want is that thing to get knocked over by the dogs or, or it just slip off and then it falls in here and catches the house on fire and that would not be good. So that's it. These guys are extremely tired. Plus chicken whisperer was playing with them. So anybody that has baby chicks knows when you're playing with them and giving them a bunch of stimulated action, it tires them out a lot faster. So that'll wrap up everything here. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you leave a like to the video uh, and comment down below and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can follow us along. Um, you know, hopefully this helps somebody out if you're looking to start some baby chicks and different things you can do. Uh, like I said, brooders can be something as simple as this or something even more complex if you want to do it that way. Um, so the game plan is these guys will be more egg layers for us. And then those five turkeys that we have downstairs, uh, we will raise them up. And the way it's slated right now, probably by the second week of November, they should be ready for processing. And we will process them and have them for Thanksgiving. We'll have them for Christmas. Uh, and then we'll have another one for Easter. And then we'll have some left over to be able to give to friends and family. So uh, you can follow, follow us along with stuff like that. We will definitely be watching those guys grow up and move along and look some of these ones starting to wake up and get something to drink. So I uh, hope you guys liked it. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.